The, uh, so you can take a look at that whenever you want. The handout is basically what I'm going to go over today. I'm going to cover mostly Meterville, and I don't have a lot on the other three neighborhoods that are in the exhibit, Elk Park, uh, Walkerville, and Basin Creek. But uh, you can see that for yourself. Um, there were a lot of Italians scattered around town, most of them in Meterville. The second page of the handout is this map. This is the map that the Anaconda Company used to buy off Meterville. And it's dated November 1944. So they had plans way back then. Uh, I know it's hard to read because it's small and the writing's gone. Back there, there's another version of it by, by Helen back there. And every house is numbered on yes, that there are. One as who was in it. And there's a directory of that. Uh, and for those who didn't get a handout, um, I can make more because I'm not sure we made enough for everybody. So I'll make more afterwards if people are interested. So the reason I like to use this map, even though it's hard to, to see, is when I show you a picture, I will say this is North Meaderville on the picture. So I have pictures of all of this. Or I will sure. say maybe about, this um, gas maybe about 15 or 20 here. more. But we'll talk about how much of Meaderville was in the pit. You know, and so I will reference this by pointing at it using pictures up here. So that's pretty much the strategy that I use in, these, in this talk. Uh, feel free at any time to help me. You know, uh, Pete's here. He's, he's uh, been in Meaderville forever. Mike's here. They, they Just a go way back. And uh, I appreciate any comments you have. You know. um, anyway, um, we'll go ahead and get started. A uh, little bit of advertising. Um, the reason why I'm doing this is because uh, I'm full-blooded Italian. My, my father's side is Michelotti and Buni. My mother's side is Barsanti and George. Uh, I grew up in McQueen and Meaderville. I, I love this stuff. I do it as a hobby. You know, I don't do it for any other reason, and I appreciate you people coming. I am a, an active member of the archives. I think we have the finest archives in the Northwest, maybe in the United States. You know, and this is the gem of our history, and Butte has lots of history for sure. Um, so anyway, that, that lets me uh, at least talk a little bit about it. Again, the purpose of this map, which isn't very good, but I'll use it a lot. So the way it works, this was the picture you saw when you came in to the archives today. It's downstairs. It's part of the exhibit. And it's probably Meterville. Lee, you can help me what year. 1920s from the cars. And, and uh, actually, this picture would have been taken right down there looking north on the map. So this is the, the main street of Meaderville going through. You might notice a few things on this. Um, the fire department, the original fire department is right here. The uh, uh, Rocky Mountain Cafe is on the other side of the street that some of you knew it as. <coughs> I think it burnt down on that side of the street, didn't they? And they moved it across the street. Those are some of the recognizable things, you know. This main street was the street in Butte, Montana. Forever. And still is, hopefully. But anyway, uh, here's another picture. And this is uh, showing the Rocky Mountain Cafe on the other side of the street. This is the Leonard Mine. And so we're dealing with this middle part of Meaderville right here. And this looks like it's probably in the 30s. Uh, you can see uh, some of the other, there's the Aero Cafe is in here and some other things. Um, this is one of my favorite pictures because it shows Meaderville and McQueen and 
This is Leatherwood Street, it's called. So this picture, McQueen is over here in your little map. Parts of McQueen. And what this is, is Leatherwood ran down from McQueen to Meaderville. And you can see right here, hopefully, I don't know, um, the, the Franklin School is right up in here. So this Guidi's grocery store was one of the four grocery stores in Meaderville. And it was uh, the Sconfienzas or Guidi's and all that. That's a family that uh, ran this grocery store. And if you continued on up this street, which came from McQueen, like I said, you basically went uh, to the main street of Meaderville, where all the bars and the restaurants were. Okay? Um, these, this is where they're doing most of the mining right now. It's called Sunflower Hill. Uh, that's where the East Pit is right now. And then again, you have the East Ridge here. Uh, so uh, just to put things in perspective. Jim? Yeah. Excuse me, but did Leatherwood take off at Club 45? Yeah, it ended on Main Street. At and it Club headed, it headed east on at, Main Street. At Club 45? Yeah, I'm not. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it did. Yeah, I was too okay. young to be in the club forty-five. <laughs> 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 you and Margaret probably spent part of it. She did. It may have been. You know, if you look at, you look at the uh, first page of this, the things I'm going to go through, you notice there's no bars on there. That's because there were so many bars. I have a separate page for the bars. <laughs> I think we'll get into the Club 45. Uh, there, there are I have 17 bars, and another guy called me this morning and he said he found another bar somewhere. So He brought the list. It's on my desk. It's, the, it's on your desk? It's on my desk. That's okay. We can, <laughs> Sorry. We can survive. This is the Leonard Mine. Uh, uh, I guess this was the pump house, and then... The shaft went down on this side of the street. Am I right on that one, Floyd? No, that's the engine room. Went down on this is the engine, the engine room. Right. Yeah. And this, this was lots of oil going across, so they have this. Car. Yeah. Drop off the cable. Yeah. And this would be going, again on the map, would be going south on Main Street, about right in here on the map. Is that getting annoying, the pointing at this too much, or is that... Too no. Okay. Well, let me know if I... You know, uh, one of my ex-daughter-in-laws had cats, and I used to drive them crazy with this uh, laser thing. <laughs> but anyway. Okay, so this... This is right here, coming into Meterville from... Uh, no, it's it's the uh, the road that wrapped. I'll show you in a second. It wraps around where all the leech ponds are now, and and I'll show you where that is in a second. But it was the other entrance to Meterville. You could come from the, from the silk from Butte Silver Bowl, or you could come from actually El Park, like you said. That was another part way to come, and and we used to take our bikes and ride down here. I know this is hard to read. But it says, uh, I think it says, uh, Myrna Lord, Myrna somebody, and Cary Grant in something about too hot to handle or something like that. <laughs> <laughs> they thought they had nice movies back then, I guess. Uh, they, they had some hot ones too. Um, this is coming into Meterville. Give credit. You know, a lot of these these uh, pictures we have co we have copyright up here. Just to put it in perspective, and I think everybody <coughs> may have seen this. This is out of Pat Carney's book on Catholic parishes. You know, here's all the neighborhoods. 
Central Butte is here. You see Peterville here. You see McQueen and East Butte. You see the pit. Dublin Gulch. You see all. This is a, this is sort of an overview of all the neighborhoods in uh, in Butte. Um, like I say, it's in that book on uh, on the Catholics. Um, just a little bit of history. Most of you know this. I looked this up. Uh, just to make sure, 1876, this meter guy came in and he's, he was uh, a mining person. Uh, there's quite a bit of on the internet about Charles Meter, and you can look it up yourself. But uh, prior to him coming in, there was a, uh, well, about the same time, this is the Meterville guy. Him. He, would, he stayed in Meterville for about 10 years and became a very wealthy man in that short period of time. That's who he's named after. And uh, prior to that, they, they the Welch, uh, the Welches uh, were in Meterville, and uh, they. Uh, Meter shipped his ore to Wales. To have it refined. And then he set up his own refinery in Meterville, and that's where he made his money. You know, so the guy was a pretty sharp person. Uh, he was doing all this stuff about the same time as Clark and Daly and Hines were having their feuds and everything. So but he didn't, as I understand, and correct me if I'm wrong, anybody who knows, he, he didn't spend that much time in Meterville, about 10, 15 years. And this Gunderson was there before. Before him, and, and it was actually called Gunderson's. Uh, this is in a picture of, of most of my relatives. Uh, <laughs> but anyway, I have to have to throw a, a look. This is taken. You know, the Italians. Uh, uh, I took pictures of the uh, exhibit, and you know, this is downstairs. You can look at it. Uh, this is uh, uh, the Christopher Colombo Lodge minutes that uh, there's copies of downstairs. And uh, to the best of my knowledge, Louis Pacini, who some of you know, was the secretary for the Christopher Colombo Lodge. And you can see, as a miner, the calligraphy was just unbelievable. And so from an archives perspective, we have, and help me, uh, Lee and Marissa, we have people who come and say, well, my grandparents were here in the late 1800s, early 1900s, and every meeting the lodge had, they kept a roll, and you can go through this and find that out. So these are invaluable books. Uh, Jim Matuzzi had these in his basement, right between his wine barrels and his, um, uh, his still, which is downstairs. <laughs> Fortunately, we moved them up here. Uh, another thing that's downstairs, most of the lodge members have uh, one of these things. I think they call it a sash or something. Is that correct? Yeah, What's this called? A sash. Yeah, lawyer. I'm going to just put it on and make myself legal at this point. <laughs> but this is about 110, 150 years old. And. Uh, you can see that they were pretty fancy, you know. We sort of cherish these things. Um, all right. Um, again, this is what I'll talk about for, for the remaining time we have. Uh, we figured there are uh, about, you know, 300 some houses in Meterville, two schools, three churches, four grocery stores, two restaurants, two barber shops, a pharmacy, a gymnasium. So this would sort of, if you take there were between 1,500 and 2,000 people in Meterville. Mm. You know, it was, and, and Meterville grew Caddy Wampus. I mean, houses went every direction. And we'll see a lot of those houses. And as I, as I go through today, you know, we'll be touching on most of this. As I said, you don't see bars on there. That's because it would fill the whole uh, slide. <laughs> when did your family arrive, Jim? My family came to Meterville by, uh, in the early, uh, my grandmother came in 19, uh, 
06. To the best of my, my grandmother on my dad's side. My dad was born in Silver City, Idaho. There was a big mining camp near Boise. And then his sister was born the next year in Naperville. So, and, and a lot of the beauties, and Joe could, you know, Joe knows this, Joe Soligog, uh, they had a place up in Elk Park too. Uh, and that was my grandmother, she was a beauty. And, uh, they used, to, they used to go up to El Park. They, there was a beauty spread up there, am I correct, Joe? Uh, oh, two of them. Two different ones, yeah. And uh, you know, a big treat was to go from Meterville to El Park. Were any of them bootleggers? Uh, <laughs> I'll let Joe answer that one. <laughs> they had to be, I guess, Joe, with all the stills that were up there, huh? So it, this is a picture of Meterville. Can you see that all right? It looks a little dim to me, but I'm sort of at an angle. But it goes to show you how big it was to a certain degree. Remember that street I talked about? This is Leatherwood Street. And Leatherwood Street wrapped around to Greedy Stores, and it went right up to uh, Main Street. And that's, that's probably the, the 45 that you were talking about. So. This is actually coming down from McQueen. Franklin and Holy Savior School would be right up here. So we used to go down like this and sort of loop around and then go right into Meterville, about where the Leonard Mine was, if you went on Leonard Mine. So, yeah. And uh, this would be mostly main Meterville. So you'd have south Meterville, like this, this map shows you. And you have a north Meterville that was mostly houses on, this, on, the, on the north side of that. Any questions? Okay, this is a good picture of that, where the, the billboard sign was. This is the road, this is McQueen, this is Meterville, and this is the road that wrapped around and went to Helena. This is all buried now, but as a boy, we used to go out up into this area up here and just spend, you know, parents sort of said get lost, and that's where we get lost. <laughs> this was beautiful country, really, as I remember. You know, it's a lot like the Molten area that you can never take a ride up there, all kinds of that. But you can see that road was a pretty good sized road and everything. <clears throat> this came from the museum down in. Uh, a new uh, labor museum, and I just wanted to throw this up here because maybe some of you have seen it. Uh, is this one of the I, I've given you that in the handout. Duke 1970 shows you all the grocery stores and, and how many uh, different kinds of businesses where they had. There were 238 saloons, so 19 or, or 17 or 18 in Weedersville was just a drop in the bucket. Yeah, and uh, 183 grocery stores that were all in neighborhoods. The one that always amazes me is the 101 barber shops. Mm -hmm. uh, so you know you'll, you'll have a copy done. There's two tamale makers. There was two. They have they have there for Treslinos, but in Meterville there was Gus's tamales. The Dominici yeah. family mm -hmm. had, and that was up on. Uh, Harrison Street on South Meter. <clears throat> okay. Yeah, amazing. My, my, first, my cousin is the butcher of Amherst. You know, <laughs> 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 he told me to bring it up. Uh, his mother and, and my mother were sisters, and our dads were first cousins. And there's only two barbers left in view, according to him. Real barbers. <laughs> <laughs> his haircut is only five dollars and he cuts it just like he did when he learned in the military. So, <laughs> he opens at 2.30 in the morning, if you can believe this. And he cuts 10 hairs by six. But most of his, a lot of his customers are, are deceased anymore. But anyway, so they, you know, it, it's amazing what went on. You can see why Butte is so, uh, was such a popular place. Yes? I don't see any Catholic schools listed here. Were there none? I don't think there were some. You know, uh, 
there should there should be a Catholic school. <coughs> well, there should be because Holy Savior was built in 1907. So. Yeah, there now, were there were I don't several. Know who did this. They, they just omitted over, that, I guess. <laughs> they just omitted that. Yeah, really. Over, right, overlooked it. I'm going to talk about the schools. And Holy Savior was a big grade school, you know, and a really nice grade school. And I'll talk more about that, but that's a good point to make. I don't know why there's no Catholic school on there. I'll have to ask the, the Ackermans, you know, or uh, Dick Gibson, or key into that new museum. They didn't list the churches on there either, so. No churches either? Yeah, that may have too much. One thing they need, though, they, they never leave breweries and bars on, for sure. There's 42 churches. Uh, yeah, the church oh, did they list the churches? Yes, right below the railroad. Oh, yeah. Oh, okay. They do right there, churches. Mm -hmm. Because, you know, in the Irish Catholic community, there was 85, how, how many, 80% of the, the community was Irish, wasn't it? Churches I don't know. Sure. Okay, good point, though. Some of you have copies of this book, I'm sure. Uh, a lot of the pictures that we use from this anniversary of 1960 of the Volunteer of the Fire Department. I mean, it was it was it was key to Meterville. This is out of there, 1947, 1952, 1960. You know, just key people that were part of you to not a lot of things they did. You know, the thing that always amazed me is, is what they did at Christmas time and at, on, in the parades. And, and this is uh, one of their Christmas displays. That as, you, as you went into the Meterville, you could see the Christmas displays. They worked on these. I, I, maybe Ivan, you could help me, but they started like January 1st. Mm -hmm. I mean, they started uh, right after the 4th of July. And, and I'll show you this one that sort of blew my mind. This is them creating the 1957 Christmas display. Look what's going on here, you know. It was almost just as nice to, to look at it as it went up. Uh, some of these had hundreds of uh, motors in it that did things for the displays. Uh, most of the motors were labeled the Anaconda Company. <laughs> nobody, nobody talks about that. Anyway, this Christmas display looked like that when it was complete. And I, I, as a boy, I remember it used to, everybody would go down there and, and just watch these things uh, function. 100 feet of panoramic pictures. I don't know who designed these. Do you have any idea? I don't you had to have some pretty good skills to do that. Uh, okay. Here's another one. I mean, these, they did it for, I, I didn't look up how many years they did it for, but they did it every year for, their whole volunteer department was uh, based on this. Then, many of you remember the, the floats they had. So, come, January 10th, they started on the float that would be in the 4th of July parade, and they do the same thing for that. I can't imagine what the, the effort that was put into this or the dollars, but and I think this is turning right on the corner of Montana and uh, Park right there. Another one. Here we go. Now we're getting to the great <laughs> stuff. Anyway, this, this is the 17 that I know of. And uh, maybe which one did you like the best? <laughs> Is there? I wonder if it was named something else. <laughs> but anyway, maybe that's the one that's sitting on your desk out there, Jim, or something. It might be. I apologize. I only remember. I only remember the Arrow Cafe. That was a real, that was the Grossos. The Rocky Mountain was sort of the white collar area. But a lot of the, like uh, Hart, Cody uh, was older in some of these. Uh, Tucker McGree was a young person owning bars in these. You can see, I mean, it was the Las Vegas of, uh, 
the north, really, that mm -hmm. main street, and all these bars would be right there in that little circle <coughs> on Main Street. I thought this was a great picture. Of, you know, now the Rocky Mountains yeah. across the street. This is getting the parish. He, I guess he bought a Cadillac every year, from what I've heard. Mm -hmm. and, uh, that famous a lot of this. Lydia's came from this bar, I mean this uh, restaurant. My dad talked about Joe Lewis coming to this, you know, back in those days. Uh, I, don't, I don't remember much about the Rocky Mountain. I remember a lot about the Arrow Cafe. But uh, I, I thought this was a, it was, I recently came across a, uh, a program, I would call it, about Montana. And it was, a, it was like a, an atlas map you know, and it was that size, and it talked about every city in Montana and gave pages to each city, Butte, Missoula, Billings, and all the rest of them. The back cover was this picture. So he paid for probably a good part of this whole thing. And I'm, I turned it, I'm going to turn it into the archives, I'm sure. Maybe, do we have any of that, anything like that? I don't know. This is a menu from the Rocky Mountain Cafe that's sort of interesting. I have some originals. You can see the most expensive thing is $3.50, New York cut, uh, lobster $3.50. Most of the stuff was between $2 and $3.50. What year was that? Hard to tell. Pretty special cuisine. 40s? Um, Rocky Mountain, that was probably in the 40s, I would think. That's yeah. 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 Again, this is a picture that we've seen before, but you can see this is, this actually says Golden Fan. <clears throat> and prior to being the Rocky Mountain Cafe, it was called the Golden Fan. And I don't oh, know that's... the history of why the two names and all that. I know the Rocky Mountain burnt down. This may even be before the Rocky Mountain, it was the Golden Fan. I think he. I think after the Rocky, the original Rocky Mountain burned, I think he moved the Rocky Mountain. Well, the Golden Fan existed, so he went. He Across the street. The, yeah. Right, yeah. 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 One, one, yeah. One side of the Wasn't it owned by Charlie Actis, who the Golden Fan? Mm -hmm. Yes. Scott Yenzis. Yeah. Uh, Scott Yenzis had part ownership in that. I know from the talking to Neil, but you can see from the cars, these were probably twenties. I would think. From Jim, could you flip back to that menu and tell me what a steak sandwich was worth cost then? Was it a dollar and a quarter or 75 cents? That's all Mark and I ate at the time. <laughs> that probably was quite a bit of money, I imagine, at that time. I'm trying to eat. There it is. Can you read it? Uh, i got to go back this way. See steak sandwich. Montana travel just three fifty, but I don't see anything under two dollars there. I don't know. Thank you. Yeah. Jim, could you go back one to the previous one, Teddy? See, yeah. They always the kept the gold. They never took the golden fan. Oh, I see. Yeah. Oh. 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 Is, is Traferish Irish? I mean, I'm Italian. <laughs> <laughs> it just doesn't sound Traferish. No, was He was a bohem. He was a bohem. Yeah. Is that car a Cadillac? I think it's a Cadillac. Is it a car? Is it? Yeah. I, I'll have to look that up, Floyd. The... Uh, I have this menu at my house, and it, there's the other side of it probably for sandwiches. You would buy, you probably wouldn't buy Mark or anything off this. Yeah. <laughs> 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 I'm sure that's right. <laughs> 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 
I'll look for it. I'll let you know. This is this is all copper. I mean, it's not copper, but it's a copper color. It's a beautiful mini. It's not very big, you know. Uh, I think Teddy was. I don't know how. Have we ever done a history on Teddy? He probably. Uh, Teddy. I don't know how he became such a famous person. He, he was backed by the Antonelli family. Oh, okay. And that's how he started his restaurant. Oh, okay. Teddy to Parish. Teddy to Parish, did you hear that? Was backed by the Antonelli family. And the Antonellis were pretty big in mining up in that. That's right, because Frank mentioned they were partners in the M&M &M at one time, mm -hmm. Part, partial. This is sort of an interesting one, because I, I was looking at this sort of last night. This is the Aero Cafe, mm -hmm. and, and I don't remember it that way, because uh, That's long. this is what I remember. And I think it's the same building, and they just put a front on it or something. Because it looks like there's wood back here. Yeah. yeah. Can you go back, Jim? Go back one, yeah. Which one did Hart Cody run? The Copper Club? Bar? The Vegas? The Vegas Club? Yeah. The yeah. Copper Club or something? Yeah. I'm not sure. Yeah. Uh, Fred's Place and the Lucky <laughs> Mom right there, they, got, they both got destroyed during that fire. Okay. And Jim Matusi was telling me that his... Uh, uh, he had to go you know, get somebody out of there. Some of his relatives, and they were too busy in the back of Red's place playing a, a card game, and they weren't about to get to that card game. <laughs> <laughs> and it's all burning down at the same time. <laughs> this, is this the Calusa or the letter 9? That's the letter. That would be the letter F. Yeah. <clears throat> and this is Main Street here again. It would be on, on the west side of Main Street we're talking about. In the Euro. I, I, I have one memory of the Euro Club. I have lots of memories of the Euro Club because my family would go there all the time and my, my aunt spent a fortune on punch boards there. But, uh, in, in the Little League had their annual dinner in the back of the Euro Club. And there, that's when Little League just started. And, and this was a big deal to go have dinner at the Euro Club. You know. uh, we were 11, 12 years old. Another bar. Yes, yes, yes. The Brass Rail. Yes, yes. That, that was ours too. Yes, the Brass Rail. This is the Merc, isn't it? Yeah, that's yeah. 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 This looks like yeah. sort of uh, 50s, I would say, from the combination of ours. Yeah. 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 I think those are the same trucks they're using now. <laughs> Actually, Leatherwood came into Maine for you asked about that, and it actually split uh, down yeah. below a ways and came. In, this is part of it right here, and then there's another part of it. Yeah, you just turn here and pull down. Yeah. Okay. Am I going too slow? There you go. There's another. There's another bar. There's another one of uh, Stephanie's, right? Yeah. Yeah, that's that's our. Yeah, that's yeah. one of the four grocery yeah. stores. And, and it burned down. I can't remember what year I got the Okay. This looks like <coughs> what your car would not be. I was trying to. 59. 59. 59. 59. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Fifth, that's um, four. My sister and her husband had a car just like that. Uh, and, uh, you know, that. The grocery stores weren't that big, really. Ours was a specialty store, like, you know. Specialty? Yeah, we had a lot of specialties in there and a lot of fancy things. I have a picture of the inside of this. Pete uh, was our. Yeah. yeah. Pete was one of the ones that worked there for a long time. He worked oh, in yeah. the water. And yeah. at the Merck. Yeah, yeah sure. Yeah. Like when you were yeah. 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 Oh, yeah. yeah. And I did too. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I think that. See, there's a Vegas club, and I don't know who that. Oh. Does anybody know? That was a yeah. No one had that one. It seems like you know, just from, and I only have about half the bars. I mean, you, you could spend your whole weekend 
just walking around Main Street. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I think at that time, uh, Devin, Stevie Devin had it. Stevie Devin? This looks like about the same time in terms of the cars and everything, don't they? In 1948, Jim, on a Saturday night, outside the Vegas Club, there was a fight, which was typical on Saturday night. There was a, usually a fight every Saturday night in Peterville. I was, I was there, and there was a knifing at the fight, and a young boy from Anaconic was killed uh, in, in front of the Vegas Club. 1948. Yeah. Who, who, yeah. You don't want to mention names, Anna? I think an Italian was convicted. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> that, that makes sense. <laughs> Who's the uh, Who is it? I know, you know, Meterville was, well, we went to the Arrow and, and uh, our, our parents just stuck us in the back room and come and told us to come out a couple hours later or something. And I don't know what went on in Main Street. <laughs> anyway, I took a picture of this because this is part of the exhibit. And, you know, uh, so so much of Meterville was in the winemaking. I remember actually helping my dad crush grapes with, like you see here. And that, you know, Every basement in the Queen of Meterville yeah. had barrels That's and right. crushers, and then you had the steels. And you can look at this on your way out. You know, it's just down the stairs there. Most of this stuff uh, is Matuzzi's, uh, and uh, I think he's gone at the bit to, to make some more wine. And Grappo is he wants it back pretty soon. But anyway, this is, a, this is an excellent display. Of, the grapes used to come into the. Uh, New produce area, and they took the trucks down there and, and uh, took a truckload of grapes from the railroad cars to your house. And, and uh, it, I forget what time of the year they probably around this time of the year, October, October more. Yes, yeah, October, October. Yeah. My dad, Joe Stefani, but my real dad, Joe, now he was one of the first ones that brought him in the railroad cars. Yeah, and then Dan. And where were they getting the grapes from? Do you remember? Part of California. So no, California. I can't remember. <laughs> yeah. And, and and most of the Italians, you know, drank half to a fifth of the uh, a wine a day. I know my my uncle. I always thought soup was maroon or the red because uh, <laughs> in the morning he'd have a little wine. He'd always put a couple shots in his soup at lunchtime, and whatever was left at night, he that that's. The end of that bottle. So they had to make wine. They couldn't afford to buy it. Yeah. He always criticized me for drinking milk. He says that's going to kill you. <laughs> okay. So schools. We talked a little bit about that. Uh, this is Leatherwood Street for those of you that knew McQueen. This is the Holy Savior, and the Franklin would be right here. Okay. This is the house that is out on. Continental Drive right now that's part of the, the parish um, Holy, Spirit. Holy Spirit's yeah. house. They moved that house. You know that they they, they buried uh, Holy Savior when the when the dumps got closer to it, you know. Um, but again, what we're talking about is right here, going from McQueen to Meterville, or Meterville to McQueen, and this separates the two neighborhoods, at least, that's what a lot of people think. And again, this is the hill that's being mined pretty heavily now. One thing I want to point out here, and this is how simple life was then, a railroad ran right behind the Queen here, and you can see how it looped back here, and then it came through a tunnel right up here. I don't know if you know about this. Well, we used to hop the train here, and ride it back into this beautiful country. It took about an hour for it to get up here, and then it would go through the mountain there towards Helena. And then we would like eat lunch up there. Hi. <laughs> <laughs> this is my wife, so now I have to get up here. coming. <laughs> anyway, uh, so we basically had, uh, that was our entertainment. You know, you'd get off up here and have lunch, or. If you had any guts at all, you'd stay in the tunnel and see if you had the next train, you, you could stay on the next train going through. But anyway, uh, we, we didn't do that a lot. I mean, 
maybe once a month or a couple of times, but it was, it was entertainment. Again, the Holy Savior, though, uh, I'll show you in a little bit, but I think the, so the, between these two schools, Holy Savior and Franklin, you may have had 500 students. I tried to have the, 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 the staff up here come up with uh, uh, the students, you know, at, uh, at, uh, at Holy Savior and Franklin, and they couldn't find anything, but I counted one graduating class of Holy Savior that had 25 in it, and I, I counted a uh, graduating class, and I'll show it to you in a second, from Franklin that had about 15. So 40 a year, yes? I was just going to say that my dad went to the Franklin School of 1900. They didn't speak a word of English when they went there. So uh -huh. those teachers had a lot of language barriers. Oh, yeah. They started teaching those kids. Uh -huh. No, they made them speak English. My father did not speak any English until yeah. he started first grade at Franklin. And mm -hmm. they were not allowed to speak <coughs> Italian. Yeah. And um, yeah. so then my grandfather made them all speak English at home. He said sure. they were so going to speak that. English in school. They were going to have a you know, and that's why we can't speak Italian, I think, or Croatian or whatever, because they were embarrassed when they couldn't speak English. You're right. Um, this is the Franklin School. You can see it's a good sized school. Yeah. Uh, you can see that there's quite a few students. Uh, I mean, it, and they were only probably. 25 yards apart, you know. We used to play in, in the field there, and I can show you that in a minute. Jim? Yes? Yeah. Do you have any idea what year that picture of the Franklin would have been? I'll go back and see if there's any yeah. on it. Oh. oh, I don't know. Yeah. Probably 50s, I would think, you know, maybe before that. You know. okay. I have uh, been able to accumulate a lot of Franklin graduation pictures. This is a graduation class from Franklin. Uh, and you can see there's about 12 in there. This gal, came, I gave a talk quite a few years ago. She taught forever at the Franklin. That's Gwen Mitchell. Gwen she taught Gwen my mother and she taught all of us. Yeah, Gwen Mitchell. And she's a young woman. Yes, yes. And she died in her 90s. Yeah, so what would you say? Uh, so our class yeah. is either 48 or 49. Geraldine, <laughs> you. Yeah, and they rec you know, and, and you recognize some of the people. Uh, we're trying to get more information on, I'll, I'll talk about the graduating class, because Holy Savior has every graduating class, and I'll tell you why. But Franklin, it's tough to get stuff about the Franklin. And Harrison's almost impossible. Yeah, she's in that picture. Are you? <laughs> Geraldine. Geraldine. Geraldine, yes. I Which am one? You're the top row up here. You went Holy Savior. The third you? one from the. No, I went to Holy Savior. I went to Holy Savior. Oh, These are yeah. pretty good looking gals. <laughs> Catherine Ann is here. The size of this. I mean, the size difference. This boy looks really familiar. Oh, I, I think he's a Lorango or something. I don't know. Uh -uh. The Franklin kids were non Catholic, yeah. were they? Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. We couldn't play with them. <laughs> this is what we've been able to find of the Franklin School, and you can see uh, a lot of names you'll recognize, Rocco, Eggdahl, Diane, uh, she was a neighbor of ours in McQueen, she just passed away about a couple of weeks ago, Leslie and Reinhardt, and then you recognize this guy for sure. The <laughs> Zolist, uh, Danny Shea. So, you know, they did take a lot of pictures. I'm sure this is our 1956 class, it says. And how many are up there? 12, 14. And Danny Shea, Joe Mazzola, and uh, what's her name? I just passed away. Let's say they all went to Central. Yeah, yeah after, yeah. Exactly, yeah. Rolando, that was her sister, yeah. How many, yeah, Frank and Holy Savior kids, you know, spent a lot of time together. A lot of these people were from McQueen. I know Leslie and Danny Shea and the Mazzolas and Guyanis, they are all lived in McQueen and went to the second. So, 
Uh, Franklin had some great female athletes. This is the, the, the city championship team, and you may have seen this, in 1928 basketball. And I don't recognize a lot except this is my aunt. Her name was Sylvia Madalena. Her, her daughter is Mary Evans, who uh, um, works up here. The one next, right next to my mother. Which one? Oh, yeah, because they were good friends. Yeah, right, right next to, right this there, one? down. Right. Yeah. Well, right oh there. yeah, it looks just like you now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I, I, lots of times I like to look at the shoes they wore. God forbid, it looked like uh, Nike stuff wasn't too available. <laughs> anyway, uh, Franklin School News. Somehow we, I don't know where I got this one from, but. Uh, you can see it's a pretty, this is a pretty big class, really. There's probably 25 in that one. Um, what year is it? 25, I think it's I chose this Holy Savior one in because this is a, a 1936 class of, of Holy Savior. And Father Piernot, some of you know that person. Uh, there's quite a few people in here that, that are recognizable, at least to me. This is a Patrice. This is a Butori. This is a Jolly. This is an aunt of mine. Her name is Fran Corcoran. She was a beauty. You know, and as it turns out, Holy Savior existed from 1906 or 7 to 1967. So about 60 years, we have a picture of every one of these because Father Piernot and Father Capridge made sure that their graduating classes were taken. Mm -hmm. That might be the only, and I'm not just telling you this, but it might be the only school in Butte that has a picture of every one of their graduating classes. Mm -hmm. And Ronnie Patrice, who does a lot of work up here, has, I think now, come up with names for every person in these graduating classes. I like this picture, it's sort of sad. This is the Franklin School burning. I mean, it's so many things we lost to fire, and, and I wouldn't even know the year this happened. I don't know if anybody knows that. Mm -hmm. well, Do you know when the school burned? What year? Well, 59. Okay. There was, there was a third church in Meter in this Saint area. Helena. Nobody knows about it. Oh. It wasn't Catholic. It was the United Methodist Church, and it was right across the street from the, from the Franklin. Yeah. Oh. Like I say, you know. My grandmother probably did this one here down. It's a nice building, really, you know, when you come right down to it. This is, in, this is St. Helena's, you know, all the Italians went to St. Helena's and all the... Uh, Croatians and, and uh, with, that, with uh, Holy Savior, but this is it tells you 1921, the grand opening of Frank of St. Helena. You know this church is up at the museum. Mm -hmm. My sister it. was the last one married there by Father Gannon. Oh, sure. Jim? Yeah. The building next to it, if that became the reception hall. Yeah, I'll show back you. In the front, uh, this one gone, right? Yep. Back in the 20s, that was, known, that was another bar, it was known as the House of David. <laughs> a relative of Don, his uncle Ernest ran this house, yeah. and Bob Kelly told me a few years ago that his mother had his first her first drink of alcohol in the house of David. <laughs> <laughs> so they built it as a bar and it became a, a thing. And uh, and uh, I, I know because my mother and father were married in this church. Both of my sisters were married in this church, and they always had the wedding reception here and, and you just played out here. You can see it's pretty much in a, in a, in a removed area. I, it actually was right up here in, in the map right there. It was right there, sort of off Main Street. But it was a nice reception hall as I remember it. And the church was nice too. This is inside, this is a, a May crowning in, uh, in St. Helena's. Yeah, and this, I think it would probably be about 1955, 56. Uh, you know, you, every May you had a special ceremony in the May crowding. Uh, this is me right here. 
Oh. 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 Yeah. <laughs> the only reason I know that is because it must have been probably the maid, but I'm starting to get black already at that long shot time of the year. Again, more uh, more inside pictures. This is a, a picture of Holy Savior in at uh, Christmas time. Um, and I'll go through these. I know the time is sort of sneaking up. Oh. This is Father Catholic yeah. inside of Holy Savior. Um, grocery stores, I'm sure a lot of you are anxious to deal with the grocery stores. And this is that weedy grocery store, and uh, they're famous pretty much for their salamis and all that kind of stuff. Sausage. My grandmother's house was this one right out here, right down here. So my, my oldest sister was born in Meterville. My grandmother was living there, and, and uh, then we moved to McQueen, and, and uh, my other sister and myself were, were uh, born and raised in McQueen. That, that <laughs> Model P gym that's there. This one? Yeah. Tukey Cromerich lives in Clancy. He has got that vehicle. He bought it from Dominic. Really? Uh, he and he has just about got it totally refurbed. Oh, yeah. They used to deliver with that, didn't they, Joe? Yeah. yeah. They had a Model A, too. Uh, this is a key, I think. Uh, this is the one Joe's talking about, Dominic Weedy. Uh, he bought it from the music. And his brother was a little tiny guy named uh, Fred. He lived close to be 100. He was in a lodge. Uh, and I, I knew him. I didn't know Dominic. Did you Dominic. to the names of the groceries? Oh, sure. There may be more. How about contest? Huh? How about contest? Contest. Yeah. So there's five. You know, can you imagine a, a neighbor? Well, there were, like I said, 1,500 people, and nobody, everybody shopped in the neighborhood, so you had particular grocery stores that you went to. You know, every neighborhood there had quite a few grocery stores. Uh, the reason I put this up here is because the Guidis, you know, this was a, some sort of a car. It's downstairs in the exhibit, and you can see Italian salami. I know from talking, Neil Scampianza is a grandson of, of the Guidis. His mom was a Guidi. And he told me that they had multiple basements where they were transferred. They would first put the salami in, in the, one of the cellars and leave it there for like three, four months, and then they would move it. I mean, these, they specialized in, in salami and sausage. The other thing, Jim, uh, those uh, grocery stores, uh, the Elk Park Dairies used to produce a lot of veal. And uh, at that time, you didn't have to have them stamped or anything else. Every day, dairy up there provided Guidis and Mercantile and that with uh, veal. Yeah. They ate a lot of veal in those days. Yeah, a lot of Elk Park stuff came from Elk Park to uh, Meterville. Mostly Grapple. <laughs> the moonshine was uh, preceding the, the deal or something, huh, Joel? Uh, I just throw this up again because, like I say, you know, just to put it in perspective, the greenies. And I have stuff on the rest of the grocery stores. This might be the one that you were talking that's about. That's the inside, yeah. That's my brother Tony, the first one back there. Pete in that one, no. Yes. Pete's exactly. Exactly. right there, and, and Pete's sitting yeah. right there for those people to talk about Pete. Yeah, there's yeah. Pete. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. And where yeah. did the turkeys come uh, Look at what's hanging. Look at this. Uh, you know, if you go to Italy, this is a typical grocery store. Well, those turkeys were raised. Jim, he said, Pete said that the turkeys came from Guy George in Waterloo. Guy George. Yeah. Oh, they brought all these turkeys in. This must have been around Thanksgiving, would you say, or something? Yeah. I hope they didn't do this every day. <laughs> 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 oh, for the holidays. This, uh, many, a lot of you know, uh, this is Minnie Hillen. And you know uh, Denise, the, at St. Anne's. That's her mom. And uh, this Martin Favero, who was asking me about Martin Favero? Yeah, this is the picture I was telling you about. Yeah, and it took, what was it, the Favero's and the Stefani's? Well, owned it? he was my dad's partner. Oh, okay. My brother Tony owned it. He sold it to his partner, Martin. I saw Martin by the 
he you were a pretty handsome guy. Yeah, yeah. Oh, very good. This guy, you, he looks like a lot of the Italians that you see uh, floating around Italy. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, but I can't believe how many turkeys wow. are. Oh, yeah, they used to bring in wine all the time. They raised them especially for the store. Yeah. A lot of you might know a guy named Tuffy Chibatari. Uh, you know the Chibatari. My wife's great, great uncle. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And Tuffy must have been a delivery boy for the Mer for the Meaderville grocery store, so he's just taking a rest right now. <laughs> he he died not too long ago. I was one of his old Yeah, John. Uh, maybe a couple, three years. Ago, maybe yeah, a little bit longer. Yeah. But you can see again the vehicle. I don't know if that one ever came. They found that one at all. Um, I don't know much about this grocery store. It's called Bertoglio Grosso, Gros, Grosso. And Bertoglio, you know, was a sort of a godfather type that, that had a, where the, what, help me with the rest of it. Casagrande. Yeah. Now, Bertoglio, at one time, was in the he was the one that was seven the partner of the <coughs> meter number. Okay. Yeah, of the store. And then he split off and went down to the Red House district or something? Uh, I don't know where he went. He went to the He wasn't. Because the thing that's confusing about this to me is that there's a, there was a store named Grossel's, and this looks really old to me. Yeah. Yeah, that, that's actually. Before it was Bertoglio Grossel's. Yeah, I don't remember. That almost looks like that Gunderson store to me. I was just looking at it, you know, the original Gunderson store. Maybe the Grosses bought it. <laughs> Miner's Market. Yes. Yeah, some of you remember that. Uh, Meterville Bakery. Oh. I like the, the bakery thing is, uh, was mostly the Scott Fianzas. Uh, Frank and whatever that is. Viago or whatever. Yeah. And they, they cooked. Here's... John Sconfianza in his bakery, and as I understand it, they delivered bread and breadsticks to everybody, you know, they using made that truck. Best bread. Oh. I know, oh. yeah. They made good bread. And then Chick, one of the relatives that was in there, his grandmother was the one with him. He's still out of life. Yeah. yeah. I know oh. when our, lo our lodge has two dinners a year uh, at Lydia's, and Joanne Sconfianza brings in uh, the, uh, the breadsticks. Bread we, we're not allowed to eat Lydia's breadsticks. Bread <laughs> she, bread bread bread. bread. she brings them in now. So. They were good. Now, we, you mentioned Trezzolinos and, and Don. This uh, must be one of the th two that you mentioned. I, yeah, so it's it's on. Gus's. Yeah, you can see this is way back. So Trezzolino has been in existence for a long time. I don't know when Gus has stopped. Uh, in Pestar, uh, Pestar's were with Gus's on Gus's tamales too. I looked, I, I looked, I went to the internet this morning because I was looking for something and, and I went to, I just typed Google Meterville, you know, and uh, there's a lot of pictures out there. I mean, there's, there's a picture of Trezzolino's that I don't have in this, uh, of the inside of Trezzolino's, like that one where you saw the murk and all that stuff. So. You know, Jim, I don't, we were discussing whether we should say this or not, but that Trezzolino were nephews of the guy who started the Butte one. Mm -hmm. There was a bunch of brothers, and they went out into the United States. It, it only States. went as far as the Calusa. The, the <laughs> <laughs> it went as far as the Calusa, but the Trezzolinos. So the bars were sort of a barrier, how huh? you didn't go past those, uh, I guess? Well, the Calusa was right next to my house. Yeah. Um, these are uh, two uh, tidbits towards the end. There was a streetcar that went from uptown to Meterville, and this is a picture of it. It's not labeled here, but if you look at that, it says Meterville on it right up here. And I've been told it was called a dinghy. Mm -hmm. Do you know anything about that? My dad so, always referred to it as a dinghy. As a dinghy. And the way it worked is, is it went to where sort of the pit is now, you know, and it went and you stopped there, and then it had this little one car thing called a dinghy that took you into Meadville in Queen. Dinky. Dinky. Dinky? Yeah. Dinky. Dinky. 
Thank you. Yeah. I have no idea why it was called that, but uh, McQueen had one too. Yeah, but the, the main streetcar went from uptown to sort of where the highway was, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah over the bridge. Yeah, and we've been down to Great Falls, uh, East Butte, and then up to the Columbia Gardens. Okay, and this would also go up to the Columbia Gardens then. So we have a chance for though. Uh, I'm sort of going to throw a little bit of the sports stuff. Uh, this is a Meterville 1920-18. A lot of people in here. This is my father. Uh, this is my uncle Jim. And Tuffy's in here. Lumen Hillich is in here. Gary Gorsh. You know, and uh, this is the picture that I use on Facebook. For those of you that do Facebook, you know, you're supposed to have a portrait of yourself. And I'll have people write back, which one are you? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, give me a break. <laughs> so I write back, I'm this one, the, in the second row, the first person. Because needless to say, you know, I'm the darkest one in our family. And that guy, a lot of people say, well, you, that guy, you know, Can't black. He was black. I was a lot like him. But anyway. They did have a, base, a lot of baseball teams. A lot of boxing went on in the Meaderville gym. It was part of the Leonard Mine and everything. Big name boxers would come into Meaderville constantly. Uh, and this is a picture of a young men's club where they taught boxing. Uh, and another, uh, I was surprised how many uh, female teams they were way back then. You don't think there is a lot, but they certainly are. Um, This is a Holy Savior team, uh, and I like it because this is Kovacic, this is, uh, this is Sunny Lubick, this is Martin Favero, as I remember. Thanks, Joe. Uh, this is Jerry Buny, a cousin of mine, who, who actually collects most of this stuff. He was the janitor in the Thornton building when the Anaconda Company got bought out. And when they threw stuff away, he went through the dumpsters, and he he sells an awful lot of stuff. Who's the coach? Paul Pelletier. Yeah. That's your uncle. Uh -huh. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and there's a bunch of other people. This is uh, Sernich. Uh, Frankie. That's your buddy from Anaconda. Uh, this is. I can, you can get in a good argument over this. Where was the borderline of McQueen and Meterville? And uh, I show you this picture. Here's McQueen. Here's Meterville. Here's the Holy Savior. Here's the Franklin. A lot of people thought it was right between the two schools. If you look, if you do any research on this, you'll find that it was this. I think it was called Hayes Street, and, and that's the original. We have quite a bit of information on the original. Homestead and yeah. McQueen. There was one below Hayes Street. I can't remember. Oh, there is one below. They lived on Hayes Street, and at the end of the block is where our property ended, at my grandmother's house. New Jenny's house. Down on that street. Yeah. yeah. And I don't remember what the name. Do you remember what the name of that street Yeah, there was another street right down here that was sort of a partial street. Do you want yeah, to get a good it. argument going? All you have to say is that Holy Savior was actually in need of it. <laughs> because if it, if it wasn't between the two schools, then Holy Savior would have to be in Meaderville. So Meaderville had two churches, and uh, the Queen didn't have any, but the Croatians don't like to talk about that. <laughs> and here's, here's East Butte over here. Here's a baseball field that they had. So, again, this, this is a good picture of Main Street of Meaderville. This is Franklin School. You can see how that one street runs down, and then it eventually splits off here, and it goes into Main Street in both directions. Uh, this is something that comes up a lot, and I can quickly go through this. But in, in 2004, I had a, a graduate. I was still working at Tech, and, and a guy named Steve Luff did his master's thesis on the Queen. And basically what he did is he did all these pictures that you see around the room. And part of his was he took and, and, and overlaid Meterville into the existing topology of what we have nowadays. You know, so he, 
basically, these are, this is North Meterville, Main Meterville, South Meterville. And you can see where, as it exists, you can see where, what was in the, uh, the pit, South Meterville. Yeah, South Meterville. Yeah. So, Jim, you can where, yeah, where is this? If you go to the viewing stand, you know where it is up here. You can look back down and still see a little bit of McQueen of Meterville. And part of his thesis, he, he showed where Hazel Street was. You can see these trees if you're ever up in the viewing stand. That's the only part of, of Meterville and McQueen that exists right now. Maple. A few other more pictures, and then I'll. This is North Meterville, and this is where Orzotis and Ocellos live. So this would be up there. And I, well, some of these houses are Ocellos and Orzotis. I, you can see that North Meterville was pretty well laid out compared to the other parts of Meterville. This is the original gas station that Guy Ocello had. It was right down here coming into Meterville, yes. and he, eventually he started selling refrigerators and stuff yeah. out of there. Yeah. Yeah. <coughs> here's Main Street in Meterville again, you can see, again, here's the, uh, I think that's St. Helena's right there. I only have a few more. 